Okay, so today we're going to practice using the set of differential equations we call Navier-Stokes equations. Um, as a reminder, we got these equations by doing a force balance on a differential fluid element where the forces on the element were uh, pressure gradient, let me actually get a, this back, pressure gradient, body force of some kind, which is usually gravity, although it could be magnetic or electric forces and um, shear stress, shear forces on it. And the left-hand side of this equation is just mass times acceleration. So we have a, a mass per unit volume times a um, Eulerian form of acceleration. So this is uh, fundamentally mass times acceleration, which is something we're all familiar with. Um, and solving this differential equation allows us, to, which relates the velocity at one point to the velocity at another point, right, in space, um, solving this differential equation allows us to solve for the flow profile in a channel or anywhere, really. Um, just as a reminder, there's only a handful of these that you can actually solve by hand, and solving it by computer is really hard. Um, it's, it's an active area of research now to increase um, the range of Reynolds numbers you can do direct solutions of Navier-Stokes equations for up to usable situations like a car or a or a plane so um yeah so let's do this which uh step one is which direction we care about it's a force balance so fundamentally we have to look at which direction of forces we care about we have a pressure gradient in this direction which is the x direction so we're probably going to care about the x direction um good now let's reduce some dimensionality here let's write down some um assumptions um, number A, we're going to assume steady state. B, um, infinite in X, and C is infinite in Y. So if it's steady state, we can make this zero due to A. If it's infinite in X, um, the uh, assumption here is that nothing really changes in X, right? Yes, our pressure is changing, but our pressure gradient is constant as far as we know. So if our pressure gradient is constant in X, then um, du dx is going to be equal to zero, which is B. Um, and this is zero due to, I said Y here, but this should be uh, Z, infinite in Z. It's not infinite in Y. We have two plates in Y direction. Great. Um, we can do the same thing here. This is equal to zero due to B. This is equal to zero due to C. Wonderful. Um, we're still not out of the woods yet. This is still a somewhat difficult equation to solve. We have a density, uh, a velocity in the V direction, a U and a Y, a DU dy, and a um, pressure gradient, a body force, and a DU squared dy squared but we can simplify this even farther. Um, we're going to apply continuity. Um, first thing we're going to do though, really quick, is we're going to assume density is equal to a constant. And when we apply continuity, this is equal to zero due to A. Uh, du dx is equal to zero due to B. Uh, dw dz is equal to zero due to C. And we can cancel out rho due to D which leaves us dv dy is equal to zero or v is equal to a constant. And if we go up to our, our, our flow, our, our, well, our, our schematic of our, our flow situation, I'm gonna pick right near the wall right here. It could be anywhere on the wall, but I'm gonna pick right on the wall. And we know that the velocity at h uh, over negative h over 2 is equal to 0, therefore that's equal to our constant. We're going to call this equation 2, this equation 1. We haven't got a whole lot of equations yet, so I hadn't really numbered them, but now we're going to, we're going to number them because we're about to get a lot more equations. Great. Um, now let's apply the details of our problem. Well, equation 3 is going to be that dp dx is equal to neg uh, p low minus p high divided by l because that's the information we have, right? We know the pressure difference across the length of pipe. 
And what else do we know? No body force. Great, so let's go up here and, and do that. So this is equal to PL minus pH over L um, due to three, and this is equal to zero. And uh, we forgot this is equal to zero due to two, because V is equal to zero everywhere. Right, all right, let's, uh, let's solve the differential equation. So, um, what we have left is negative PL minus pH over L plus mu du squared dy squared. I'm going to rearrange that a little bit and put the uh, pressure gradient on the left hand side. So PL minus P, pH over L is equal to um, mu times du squared dy squared. And this is a solvable differential equation. So let's do it. Um, if we integrate both sides, we get a dy over here and a d, d, this actually is uh, equal to integral of mu du dy, d, du dy. So when we integrate this, we get pl minus ph over l times y plus c1 is equal to mu du dy, which we can separate and integrate again. Um, do, 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 dy, and we get um, one half pl minus ph over l y squared plus c1 y plus c2 is equal to um, mu times u. So let's actually divide both sides by mu. So this is 2 mu over L times PL minus pH times y squared. Now these are just two constants, so if we divide by something, the constants kind of just absorb it, right? And they're like, okay, I'm, I'm still a constant and you don't know. Cool, so now we apply the boundary conditions. And this is the important, important part of this problem. And honestly, it's one of the things that makes this particular problem a little difficult. So we have clearly one boundary condition that we know, which is that the uh, velocity at h over two is equal to zero. So u, I'm gonna go here, whoop, u at h over two, y is equal to h over 2 is equal to 0. Um, we also have y, that's a negative there, we also have y at positive h over 2 is equal to 0, but it turns out that doesn't give us any new information about this problem. So we need to use another um, boundary condition, and that boundary condition is symmetry. So if we apply symmetry, symmetry, what symmetry means is that the, pro uh, the problem is symmetric across a certain line and therefore that line or that plane means that um, a, a derivative has to be equal to zero there. So if we have symmetry at y is equal to zero, we know that du dy has to equal zero there. And the reason we know that is the velocity has to be the same here, has to be the same here at this wall. And we know the velocity has to be positive somewhere in this direction over here because the fluid is being pushed in that direction by the, the pressure. So if we're drawing a profile that goes from zero to positive to zero, we know that the inflection point, the, the point at which the gradient of that is zero, should be in the middle because of symmetry. So that's what we're gonna say. Symmetry says this, um, no slip condition. says that uh, the u at y is equal to h over two is equal to zero. And now let's apply these two boundary conditions. So let's do this one first. Let's do symmetry first. If we take the derivative, we get pl minus ph over l times mu times y plus c1 is equal to zero. That's what this boundary condition tells us. 
And if we solve plug in, sorry, y is equal to zero, we find out that c1 is equal to zero. Great, that's fantastic. In fact, that's why we did that boundary condition first. Um, a little bit of experience has taught me that um, if you do that first, you'll, you'll, you'll cancel out one of your um, constants without having to solve for multiple um, constants at the same time using multiple equations. All right, so let's apply the no slip condition now. So we have um, PL minus PH over 2 mu L times now H over t y is equal to H over 2. So we have H over 2 squared plus C1, oh, nope, no C1, plus C2 is equal to 0. Great. So um, in this case, C2 is equal to negative PL minus PH over 2 mu L times H over 2 squared. And if we write out our final equation, that we find out that this is equal to um, uh, PL minus PH over 2 mu L times Y squared minus PL minus PH over 2 mu L H over 2 squared. And that's equal to U. And this is our velocity profile. So if we wanted to write out our full velocity equation in Eulerian coordinates, we would say V, which is a function of X, Y, Z, and T, is equal to PL minus P, PH over 2 mu L, and I'm going to do a little bit of simplification here, times Y squared minus H over 2 squared, which is equal, yeah, times i hat plus zero j hat plus zero k hat. Wonderful. Let's analyze this flow now. First of all, is it expanding or is it contracting? So if we're going to look at that, we have to um, use our dilatational constant. So one over dv dv dt is equal to the partial of u with respect to the x the plus the partial of v with respect to y plus the partial of w with respect to z. Again, now this is why we label our um, assumptions is so that we can just be like 0 due to b, I believe. This is 0 due to c. We're going to have to pop back up here real quick and double check. Yep, we got that right. Good. Um, and uh, we know V is zero e everywhere, so it's equal to zero. So our fluid is indeed incompressible. All right, now the question is, is the flow irrotational? And we can solve for this, oh, it's not a great psi, which is equal to dw dy minus dy dz i hat plus d u dz minus d w dx j hat plus um, d v dx minus d u dy k hat. All right. So we find out that our psi is equal to d dy of p low minus p high over rho 2 rho l times y squared minus um, h over 2 squared k hat, which is equal to... Um, P low minus P high over 2 mu, sorry, not 2, over mu L all times Y. So, um, oh, and we have a negative sign 
sorry, I forgot a negative sign there. This is all negative. Um, y times k hat. So is this, is this flow rotational? Yes, it is rotational. Um, is it irrotational anywhere? And the answer to that is it is irrotational at y equals zero. So if we were to look at this channel, let's redraw the channel really quick. There's two walls. And if we draw our vorticity as a function of position, it starts off negative for a positive y, but actually there are, we have a negative pressure differential in here, so it starts off positive, and then it goes backwards like this, like a line where it's zero in the middle, because this is basically the equation for a line, right? Um, and so what this tells us is we have maximum vorticity here and here, and um, the uh, and we have um, two different directions of rotation. On the bottom, um, the fluid is rotating clockwise, clockwise rotation, and here it is counterclockwise. Um, because it's positive here, which means it's rotating around the positive z-axis, which is coming out of the page, which means it's rotating counterclockwise using the right-hand rule. All right, so that's great. And we have zero ro uh, vorticity in the middle, and it also happens that we have zero shear stress in the middle, right? Tau is also equal to zero at y is equal to zero. And that's not a coincidence. Remember, vorticity is related to viscous losses. So where we have the highest vorticity, we um, have the highest viscous losses. Cool. Finally, let's calculate the shear stress at the wall. Doesn't matter. Whichever one we want to do, they're going to be the same because we have a symmetric system. Our tau and our direction on this is going to be our y face and the x direction is going to be equal to mu du dy evaluated at, let's pick negative h y is equal to negative h because that's the surface we want to look at. This is going to be equal to, we already have this derivative, we just had it above, so it's going to be equal to pl minus ph um, over mu times l times our y evaluated at y is equal to h over 2, negative h over 2. So if we plug this in, we get this is equal to um, negative PL minus PH over mu L um, times H. And that's our shear stress. So one last thing we should be able to do is if we're giving you a problem like this, you should be able to plot our shear stress profile. So we kind of talked about this earlier. If we remember this, this is clearly the shape of uh, the equation of a parabola. We have y squared minus a constant, right, times a constant. And we know it has to be zero at the edges, um, a maximum in the middle because of symmetry, because that's where our derivative is equal to zero. So that tells us uh, the maximum is there. And so we should just draw a parabola that goes to the maximum and is zero at the ed edges. And then, and then we're done. Oh, well, now we get to draw all the arrows, which is a tremendous amount of fun. And it's very satisfying. Yep, so the things we can change, we can change geometry, we can change boundary conditions, and we can change things like pressure gradients and body forces. Outside of that, there's not a whole lot we can change on Navier-Stokes and have it still be solvable.